Hello everybody and welcome back to a short video uh, hoping to answer some uh, common questions that I get from subscribers, viewers as well of the channel who haven't subscribed, um, who still send messages in and some questions as well that I've had on various discord servers that you can find me on, uh, especially the, the A32NX fly-by-wire uh, server on discord as well. I've had a couple of messages from people asking what my setup is. so. Uh, this is a short video just showing you uh, what settings I use basically. If you're new to the channel, 70% um, of you are, uh, please click that subscribe button um, and be sure to check out some of the um, beginner's guides and how-to videos that I've got on the tutorials playlist. So uh, for those of you who uh, want to know what spec equipment I've got, what hardware I've got at home, uh, I custom made my computer for Microsoft Flight Simulator's release. Um, so it's been years since I've been in the sim and I thought I'm going to build a custom computer. Um, it cost me about £1,500 from overclockers. Um, but I got I got the best for what the... basically the best that I could afford at the time. Um, and it works pretty well I must say. But I've got a uh, Ryzen 5 3600X processor paired with a NVIDIA GeForce RTX uh, 2070 Super graphics card and I've got a 32 gigabyte RAM as well um, which is uh, DDR4 and I think it clocks at what 3600 gigahertz uh, as well uh, and that works all in tandem with a one terabyte solid state hard drive that the sim is installed onto as well um, so it all works pretty well, um, and I've actually got it plugged in. Uh, I mainly use wireless as well, uh, Wi-Fi for uh, VAT sim, um, and that all works quite well. So here we go. Here's my graphics tab on the general screen. Um, you can see here it's set to custom, but that's because I've set everything to high, and then I worked around from there. I tweaked from there until I could find uh, a happy medium. And uh, I actually initially based my setup on a great video from Jay's Two Cents on YouTube. Um, and he actually helped me from watching his video. It helped me create my own setup and tweak things from there. So I've got to thank him for that. Uh, V-Sync or Half Sync, as he called it, uh, it's very broken still. So keep that off. Render scaling, I'll just leave that on 100. And I've got my anti-aliasing on TAA um, because it's the highest quality. It gives you the highest cost. It says there highest quality at the highest cost, but all my other settings are tweaked around it. TAA keeps my graphics quality incredible, uh, or at least in my opinion, for the setup that I've got, um, without sacrificing too many frames. Train level of detail, I've inched that up slightly to 125, but I've left trees buildings train vector on high and grasses bushes on medium, because I don't get close enough to trees, uh, or bushes and grass, to look at those individual blades, so medium will do. Level of detail for objects on 100, and I've got volumetric clouds set to high. A lot of ev yeah, everybody goes well. Clouds, we look at them all the time. They should be on ultra, but even on high, I get those pixelated, overly sharpened uh, clouds. Um, and there's no difference between high and ultra for a lot of these settings, uh, except for performance. So put it on high. If there's no difference, put it on high. Give yourself a couple of extra frames. Text resolution on medium. Anisotropics filtering at 16 times and super sampling at 4x4. Synthesis on medium. Water, medium, because I don't get close enough to see the waves as they crash, but I can see them from a distance, so medium will do. Shadow maps, 1024, although I have seen um, a lot of people recommend 768 as well, uh, but I've, you know, I've tweaked little bits since uh, to try and find my happy place, and 1024 is what I've left it at for now. Terrain shadows 512, contact shadows medium, windshield effects medium, ambient occlusion low, reflections low, light shafts low, bloom on, although I'm tempted to turn that off and experiment uh, with that, um, I might do that in the next few days, and if I do change it I'll, I'll edit things in the description for this video. Depth of field low, motion blur medium, lens correction off, lens flare on, and then I've got um, generic plane models on, generic plane models multiplayer off, and the glass refresh, uh, glass cockpit refresh rate set to medium as well. 
some people have said in relation to the A three two NX mod, or oh, the like, you know, for example, me as well. I I hate the new default views from the custom camera that they've set. So you can go in there and just change it. You can change that height. I've dropped it down to thirty five on my setup. The default will be fifty, um, as it is here for horizontal and zoom. So tweak those, and then just mem remember whatever you change, you need to apply and save down the bottom here. So that's uh, the first bit there, feel free to pause it so I don't have to explain everything and prolong the video. You guys get a quicker quicker view out of it that way. And that's the second part of the camera tab. Sound uh, doesn't really affect performance but yeah, there we go, that's how I've got it set up to. Uh, traffic, aircraft traffic type. Uh, I've got off because I feed everything in via vPilot and my model matching file um, but you can choose real time online, AI offline or off, I've got it off um, and it's more for multiplayer really uh, this sort of thing and therefore then it'd pop up with na traffic and ma uh, nameplates or real life, uh, real world traffic and then you'd see the flight number on there now one of the big things for uh, VATSIM is clearing your airports um, and it took me a little while to find this out and work this out myself however um, well, I was taxing around and seeing aircraft on stands that I was allocated to and then I quickly was realizing they're all static generated by the sim and I thought I'd turned everything off um, however I'd missed this setting here airport life under traffic airport life ground aircraft density put that on zero if you're going to use that sim put it on zero, leave it on zero and it will clear all your airports out and uh, I, you know, I turned, I've turned the airport vehicles and work density right down as well uh, otherwise you've just got people wandering around on the apron and odd things like that data wise I've got everything on um, I've, I've set my own bandwidth usage limit here of 40 megabit per second um, the next one up from there is unlimited but what I find then is it will take all of my bandwidth your 80, 80 gig, um, 80 megasecond that I've got, um, and then what it will do is it will shut down all of the other things in my house um, because the sim has gobbled up all of the bandwidth completely. So I've changed that to there, and I've got the rolling cache on 16 gig. Um, although I have seen things online that say you should potentially turn it off, uh, I've had no issues leaving it on. Uh, but I've set it to 16. Flight model, naturally I've got it on realistic modern. Uh, crash settings and things by the way guys, I've actually, uh, I don't know if I can turn it on here, uh, it's on another setting. MISC, units of measurement, that's a big question. So people go, um, how do you get things on kilograms? I've changed unit of measurement, thanks to the last patch, we can now have this as an option. Hybrid is the one you want. So you get um, hybrid uses feet for altitude um, but still uses some litres kilograms and things like that as well so that's the one you want and uh, then you can choose your avatars and things so you you can choose your pilot your co-pilot and uh, what instructors would look like if you were going to use those accessibility um, these are the options here where you can change your interface scales uh, you can change the menu and cockpit tooltips as well I've got them off because uh, it does my head in having them flash up. Thankfully I think that's the one that got added into the last update and thank goodness they did so I can turn everything off in the, in the cockpit in the A320. However if I went into the Dreamliner again because it's been two or three months since I flew that or the uh, 747 I would probably turn tool tips on for a couple of flights just to get used to it. And developer mode for me is off Uh, assistance wise I've got piloting set to hard, aircraft system set to hard, nav aids and notifications on hard user experience on medium um, and you can see there I've expanded that all it means there I've got anything that's potentially going to open I've got set to off and the ATC voices I've set on so apparently that's what medium means uh, failure and damage now I was getting issues where I would hit a 
rough bit of taxiway on the apron as I'm taxiing around to the runway or after landing um, and the minute I did that boom crash uh, in a, and it'd be either aircraft stress damage or uh, crash damage or whatever else so I've turned those off because they're too unreliable and too unrealistic um, so I've got rid of those, I've disabled those and icing effects I've left on as well so th there we go guys controls, um, dead zones I see a lot of uh, questions about you can see my setup here I use the T-Flight HOTAS X from Thrustmaster and I've got their rudder pedals as well, I've got the full flight kit uh, which is actually quite cost effective compared to buy them separately so sensitivity that's what my axis looks like um, the, the X axis and the Y axis are braking and uh, the Z axis is actually the rudder pedals itself and you can see here I've got sensitivity set to minus 85% and I'm still tweaking with this, I still get some serious problems with it dead zone 30% um, I might change this to sort of 66 and the problem is when they're too when it's too sensitive um, on the ground you you steer like a madman the tiny little input and it sends you shooting off to the left or shooting off to the right so and that's particularly bad on uh, on takeoffs and landings a tiny little rudder input and it will just veer you off to the left so annoyingly I've had to put sensitivity really low to try and find um, a happy medium but you just need to experiment uh, away with it guys and find whatever you uh, you think is the best setup for yourself um, and it, you know, you'll have to keep tweaking it keep tweaking it until you uh, have got the setup you want but um, I wanted to do this very quick video uh, it's only 12 or so minutes long I hope you found it useful make sure if you haven't already done so the 70% of you that are going to watch this video please click that subscribe button um, I'd really love it if you help grow the channel and uh, especially if you find these videos useful as I know quite a few of you do let me know how you get on in the comments especially if, if you have a similar setup as well um, if you've got something that's slightly different or if you've got settings that are slightly higher with a similar system please tell me so I can try and tweak things myself as well thank you all for watching and uh, see you all again soon for either another video like this or a live stream have a good day and take care of yourselves.